In this video, we're going to cover some substitution and elimination practice problems so I can take you through my thought process when I look at these problems and hopefully help you when you're having to approach them on your own. Remember, there are four main factors that we need to consider to figure out what's going on in these mechanisms. The most important is substrate structure, which I'll abbreviate as S when I'm talking about it. We also need to consider the leaving group. Is there a good enough leaving group on the molecule for substitution or elimination to even occur? We'll abbreviate that LG. If you watched my 10-minute substitution elimination summary video, you might recall that the nucleophile was really important in determining reaction mechanisms. We'll abbreviate that nuke. Finally, there may be solvent effects that we need to consider. Since we already used S here, we'll use V for solvent. <laughs> Okay, let's tackle our first problem together. Here, we're treating this bromide with sodium acetate and acetic acid. Let's consider the leaving group first. The leaving group is a halogen. With the exception of fluorine, halogens are among the best leaving groups. So we have a great leaving group and we know substitution and elimination can occur. Next, let's consider the substrate structure, the most important factor in figuring out the mechanism. So first we want to think about, is this primary, secondary, or tertiary? This is a secondary bromide. So secondary substrates can undergo SN1, SN2, E1, or E2 reactions under different conditions. So these are the most challenging substrates to deal with. So we need to look at our structure a little more carefully, and we can see this phenyl ring here. This is actually benzylic, so if this substrate forms a carbocation, we have extra stabilization by resonance with the ring. So once I notice this is secondary and benzylic, I start thinking, okay, ionization might be likely here. Let me look at my other determining factors. The solvent is acetic acid. This is acidic, it has an OH group. This is a polar protic solvent because of that proton there. These two factors here, the substrate and solvent, have me thinking that carbocation formation is getting even more likely. The last thing we need to consider is the nucleophile. Acetate is a weak nucleophile. If you draw this out, you'll see it has a lot of resonance stabilization. So it doesn't have a lot of pushing power for an SN2 reaction, and it's not a strong base that'll favor an E2 elimination. So this is telling us we're going to get carbocation formation. Once the carbocation forms, it's going to be trigonal planar, and then we can get attack of our nucleophile from either face. This gives two of the products. Now, we're forming a carbocation at the secondary center, which is a little bit hindered because of the groups on either side. Once we form that carbocation, it's really easy for acetate to come in and grab the little proton right nearby. So we're actually going to expect some elimination product in this reaction as well. The E alkene will be favored, and if you're not sure why, go check out my elimination video. Okay, let's tackle another problem. For the second problem, we're treating this alcohol with sulfuric acid. Now, I encourage you to pause the video, think about these factors, and see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Then you can unpause me and check your work. Truly, the only way to learn this is by doing a bunch of practice problems on your own. Don't get dependent on somebody who's teaching you and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Practice all the problems you can in your book. Practice with me. So go ahead and pause the video now and think about this problem. Okay, we have an OH group as our leaving group. Well, this is actually a poor leaving group. However, there's a little more to this problem than that. We have sulfuric acid. That's going to protonate the alcohol. Once this protonates, the group can leave as water, and that makes it a good leaving group. So we are expecting a reaction here. Okay, now to look at the substrate. This alcohol has one, two, three groups coming off of the adjacent carbon. It's a tertiary alcohol. Well, this is good news for us because we can eliminate one mechanism. SN2 cannot occur with tertiary substrates. We can't get backside attack. Okay, we have sulfuric acid as our reactant. This 
even when concentrated as a solution in water. So we do have some water in this reaction. And water is a polar protic solvent. Sulfuric acid is a much stronger acid than the hydronium ion. A lot of the water is going to be protonated here, so I didn't want to bring your attention to it to kind of point you in a little bit of a different direction. All right, the nucleophile that we'd have here. Well, once we use this proton to protonate here, we're going to have HSO4- minus in solution. This is super resonance stabilized, a very, very weak nucleophile. So we know that we can't have SN2 reactions here. We know we have water and sulfuric acid, which is a polar protic solvent and promotes the formation of ions. So I'm just showing C plus for carbocations can form and X minus for leaving groups can leave. Um, so our polar protic solvent can stabilize the formation of both of those. Our nucleophile is very weak. Substitution really isn't much of a choice here. So we're going to get an elimination reaction. Now, in order to have E2, we need a strong nucleophile, which we don't have. So this reaction is going to proceed by E1, forming a carbocation here, eliminating water, and then the conjugate base of sulfuric acid or maybe some unprotonated water can come in and abstract the proton. The major product will be the more substituted alkene. And this results from deprotonation either here or here. So we can get a minor amount of an elimination product resulting from deprotonation here. And of course, our mechanism was E1. Let's try another problem. For problem C, we're treating this chloride with sodium azide in DMF. Go ahead and pause me and see if you can figure out the mechanism. Okay, we have a halogen and it's not fluorine. We have a good leaving group. On to our substrate structure. The chlorine is at the end of the molecule, hanging off of this carbon here. This is a primary halide. Again, this piece of information gives us a great clue. Primary carbocations are not stable, so this substrate cannot form a carbocation. This means no SN1 or E1 mechanisms are possible. The solvent is polar aprotic, often used in SN2 and E2 reactions. So now that's the last choice that we have to make. Let's look to our nucleophile, N3 minus. This is a weakly basic nucleophile. All signs point to SN2 here. Now I just want to remind you that primary substrates that are unhindered, just with this long chain, no branching over here, tend to undergo substitution unless they're treated with a strong base that is very hindered itself. Again, you might want to watch my 10-minute summary of substitution elimination for examples of this. On to our next problem. We're going to treat this cyclohexane with NaOH and heat it. Pause me and see what you get. Again, we have a good leaving group. The leaving group is on a secondary carbon. This tells us that we have all of these mechanisms available to us, so we need to look further. The key factors here, really, I'm going to skip the solvent. I haven't written that the NaOH is in water. But the key here is really the nucleophile, NaOH. It's one of our strong bases. Strong bases, like sodium hydroxide or sodium methoxide, always favor elimination, except with unhindered primary substrates where they can undergo substitution. So this is going to eliminate. And these strong bases favor the E2 mechanism. So this reaction is going to proceed by E2, but it's not quite that simple. We have a cyclohexane. And in an E2 mechanism, the leaving group needs to be anti-periplanar to a hydrogen atom. If this doesn't make sense, try my elimination video. But if it does make sense to you, Pause this video and draw the chair confirmation that will lead to the elimination. I'm going to draw in the hydrogen atoms here and here. Those are the ones that could be deprotonated in the elimination. Now we might be tempted to just do our elimination here. I mean, if we get a double bond here, that's forming the more substituted alkene. That's Zaitsev's rule. However, things aren't always as simple as they seem, especially in organic chemistry, right? And so let's draw out the chair. Start by drawing your two parallel lines, draw two more parallel lines, 
and then connect them. All right, in order for the bromine to be antiperiplanar to anything, it needs to be axial. So we're going to choose a position on the ring where this bromine can point axial down since it's a dashed wedge. This carbon here has an axial down position, so let's place our bromine here. Now let's work our way around the ring in a clockwise direction. We have our bromine. Next door, we have our carbon with two hydrogens. Don't need to draw anything there. Next, we have our phenyl pointing up. And at this carbon atom, we have an equatorial up position and an axial down. So our phenyl will be equatorial. Continuing around clockwise, we reach our methyl, which is down below the ring. The equatorial position is below the ring again here, and we have an axial up position. Just hydrogen atoms here. And then we have our methyl, which is pointing up. The up position, the position above the ring on this carbon, is axial. All right, we might be able to see this was a little bit of a harder problem than we thought. We need the bromine to eliminate from another axial position, and that needs to be a hydrogen. However, in this example, we have a methyl group there. So this proton is equatorial, and it is not going to be able to be deprotonated to eliminate this bromine. Let's draw out the hydrogen atoms on this carbon atom. We have an equatorial hydrogen atom and an axial up hydrogen. This is the hydrogen that's available to eliminate by E2. And so the product that we get is the less substituted alkene. Now pause me and try this problem. We're going to treat this tosylate with NASME in acetonitrile as solvent. We have a little D here. This stands for deuterium, which is just heavy hydrogen. It's going to behave a lot like hydrogen. So considering that, try this problem and see what you get. Okay, otosyl is a good leaving group. We're going to have a reaction here. Now, we have deuterium here, but it's heavy hydrogen. It behaves a lot like hydrogen. And so this is essentially a primary otosyl group here. But if you were looking closely, you'll notice this double bond nearby. When this leaves, we can actually form an allylic carbocation. And I do have a video, a little more advanced, dealing with allylic and benzylic leaving groups. And these can either go SN1 or SN2. So we haven't really figured this out quite yet. We need to look at the solvent now, which is polar aprotic. Those tend to favor SN2 reactions. And we have a weakly basic nucleophile that confirms it. Now, we're not able to deprotonate from this sp2 carbon atom here, so primary allylic and primary benzylic substrates can only undergo substitution. So this SN2 reaction will occur, giving inversion of stereochemistry, and now it might be obvious why I made this a deuterium here. We also have a hydrogen atom on this carbon, but it made the carbon chiral so we could see the stereochemistry in our product from our SN2 reaction even though it was a primary allylic example. Looks like we have room for one more problem. Let's go for it. Let's treat this alcohol with hydrochloric acid in water. At first glance, this looks like a poor leaving group because it would have to leave as hydroxide. However, we have acid, which protonates the oxygen here and makes this into a good leaving group, water. Our substrate is secondary. So this is our hardest substrate to figure out because it has a lot of mechanisms available to it usually. But we'll notice that this one is next to two phenyl rings. It's doubly benzylic. If this forms a carbocation, it's going to be really, really stabilized by resonance. Our solvent is water, which is polar protic. This is also pointing us toward carbocation formation. And as opposed to this case up here where we use sulfuric acid, our nucleophile is Cl-. And this is a good nucleophile. So here, we're going to get an SN1 reaction. Now, once we form a carbocation, elimination is always possible. 
except when it can occur. And if we look here, we think about a carbocation here, we're surrounded by sp2 centers. We can't deprotonate there to do an elimination. So this substitution product is the only possible product. I hope you found these practice problems useful. I hope that seeing my approach will help you to tackle these when you're taking your exam or working problems. If you learned something, like and subscribe, click that notification bell, and we can do more chemistry together.